Are you ready to get serious about building content sites and building a profitable business online? Welcome to the Niche Website Builders Podcast. We bring you the latest field-tested tips, tricks, and strategies for building a profitable online asset. We interview industry experts, share customer success stories, and reveal our own experiences working on hundreds of sites to inspire and motivate you to make something happen. Let's do this. Welcome to the Niche Website Builder Show. I'm your host, Mark Mars. Today, I speak with Spencer Hawes. Spencer blogs over at nichepursuits.com. He's the founder of internal linking tool, Link Whisper, and co-founder at Motion Invest, a marketplace for buying and selling websites. I was really excited to talk to, to Spencer today because, you know, he's the guy that got me started in this world, you know, creating online assets. You know, a few years ago, I, I found his blog and, and his podcast. And from that moment, I was hooked. And I just consumed, you know, every episode on his podcast and, and read every, of his, every one of his blogs, you know, all inside a week. And um, I just I just loved it. And it kind of opened my eyes to kind of, the opportunity in, in this world of content sites. So I'm really excited to talk to Spencer today because, you know, I've got to ask all the questions I, that I guess I, I always wanted to ask him. So, you know, we spoke about how he got started himself. Um, he's coming up to uh, 10 years since he, he left his job. He's just a month away from that uh, at the time of recording. So, you know, we, we reflect on, you know, his last 10 years and, 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 and where that's taken him. We also go quite deep into internal linking and the importance of internal linking insight and, and, and talk about some of Spencer's takes on, on best practices. And we also talk a little bit about the future of content sites and, and where uh, our industry is going. So um, it's a really good episode, I think. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, enjoy the episode. This episode is brought to you by Niche Website Builders, an agency dedicated to helping people just like you build profitable content sites. Niche Website Builders are the hands-off content site marketing agency you always wished existed. It's run by content site marketers for content site marketers, and they help both investors and individuals alike build profitable online properties. They provide a fully outsourced approach to content creation, link building, and done-for-you website builds, the same approach they use on their own six-figure portfolios. For example, their content packages come with a proprietary keyword research process, are written by in-house native English speakers, formatted using templates proven to convert, and uploaded to WordPress with affiliate links added so that all you need to do is hit the publish button. Check them out at nichewebsite.builders slash show. That's nichewebsite.builders slash show and fill out the form to get coupon codes for 10% more content or a 10% discount on links with your first order sent right to your inbox. Welcome to the Niche Website Builders Show. Today I'm speaking with Spencer Hawes. For most people in our world building affiliate and content sites, Spencer Hawes needs no, no introduction. He blogs over at nichepursuits.com. He's founder of internal linking tool, Link Whisper, and co-founder of Motion Invest, a marketplace to buy and sell smaller content sites. Welcome, Spencer. Mark, it's great to be on the podcast. I'm excited to chat with you and uh, just dive into business. It'd be great. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm so excited about talking to you today um, because, you know, over the years, you kind of got me into, into this world. Uh, you know, two, three years ago, I was kind of listening to, to Pat Flynn and He'd kind of got more generic by that time. I know historically he, he was a lot into in, in, into affiliate sites, but you know his podcast had kind of broadened out and was kind of kind of more generic. And then I kind of found you through him and started reading your blog and listening to your podcast, and I was just like hooked. And you know from from that day, you know, within a week, I'd listened to every podcast episode. I read every blog, and and you know, it's crazy to think that I'd been doing SEO for a, for a long time, but in you know, a specifically client SEO, but I'd never really considered doing it for myself and. Your blog and podcast kind of opened my eyes to it. And I think, why, why the hell have I not thought about this before? So, um, yeah, it was kind of like, that, it was a moment of realization for me. And, 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 you know, in all honesty, I've never been happier doing what I'm doing. And I kind of see you know, your blog and your podcast as a turning point in my life for like, you know, doing something that I love, now love. So, you know, I really appreciate all the effort you put into that because like, I think it's changed, you know, my life to some extent. So, wow. Uh, and, and so, uh, yeah, so thank you for that. And uh, no, thank you. That's, those are very kind words. I mean, that's, uh, I, I try to blog and I, I try to share my firsthand experiences, right? Like what's working, I'm in the weeds and this is what I'm doing. And so to be able to hear that uh, guys like you really 
have gravitated to that and it, it's helped, right? And maybe change either a mindset or just additional tips or whatever. Like that's what I do it for. So thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, mean, I guess, you know, do you ever think about that? How, you know, how you've pos- positively affect people's lives? Do, do people come to you and say, well, you know, you, you know, I did this because of what you said and now things are different. Like, do, do you get that? Yeah. Back, I, um, I, I do think of it sometimes, um, you know, and it's interesting because it, a blog is a, a digital space, right? And so I'm not meeting with people face to face, you know, I'm not hearing them tell me their stories, you know, or sharing feedback after they read the blog post. Um, but I do get people that over the years have responded either to emails or reached out to me or, um, through different mediums have let me know that, you know, my blog really either started them on their path or, you know, sort of gave them some motivation, kind of how you explained. Uh, and so it's super cool to hear that it's had a big impact. And um, I, I certainly I try to never claim that uh, like I'm the end all be all expert, but uh, I've just been doing it for a long time. And I guess I was one of the earlier bloggers kind of in the space. Yeah. And so I, I think it's a lot of it. It's just that reason timing. Like I, I've been blogging now for over 10 years. And so just a lot of people have gravitated to that. And, and because of that, yeah, I, I, I hear the, the feedback and it's great. I, I love it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I was, I, uh, I was, I was doing a little bit of research before, before the, the call and, you know, I, I found some of like, kind of your early, earlier stuff. And, and Uh-oh. when you, you and <laughs> yeah, like it was just, 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 you know, I mean, what's turned out to be great links for you actually, like, you know, like, uh, you were on the, um, uh, entrepreneurs on fire, like podcasts. So like, you know, he's yep. become huge since, um, Pat Flynn with smart passive income, you were kind of on his podcast in the early days. And, um, yep. and there was one like with that, you got a link from like heart internet because like you did a blog with them. And that was, that was all when you were talking about long tail pro, like, you know, like uh, way back. And, um, yep. yeah, and I kind of, I can see, you know, you can see like whether, you know, that was kind of all, you're all quite young then in, in the space or well, not heart maybe, but you know, the, the other guys and you've kind of grown up together and right. Um, yeah. It's kind of, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. No, it's, um, and that's, I mean, a lot of it comes down to just being genuine and kind of reaching out to people that are in the space, right? Like you never know who's going to be the next Pat Flynn or John Lee Dumas, right? You're just kind of out sharing um, war stories with each other and you connect with the right people and and some of them, yeah, end up having these huge followings and um, you've got great links or great mentions or whatever. And it's all just helping each other out. Sure. Cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, be good to hear a little bit about yourself, like, um, you know, what you, what you do outside of work. I know you're a family man. You got, you got four kids. Um, yep. yeah, but yeah, no, no, and, yeah, and that's the other thing I found when I was researching that you're a month and a day away from your 10th anniversary from leaving your, from your job. So yeah, <laughs> that is that. correct. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. So 10 years ago, March 11th, 2011, I will never forget that date. That is the day that I officially quit my job and started full-time online business building niche websites. And at the time, like literally that's all I had was niche sites, right? I, and I had experimented for several years before I quit my job. Uh, it was a long journey, right? But that was the day that I quit my job, told my boss that, hey, I'm out of here. I'm done. I was a business banker. You know, my background's finance, business management. Uh, and so to leave like the cushy job that I had at Wells Fargo Bank and and like work at the time just in my bedroom, like right next to my bed, right? Like on the computer building these little niche websites. It, it's a little insane to think about, um, but it, it was a model that was working and and uh, certainly was paying the bills. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool that it's been 10 years. But other than that, yeah, my background is, you know, dabbled with building niche sites a lot. Um, about the time I was quitting my job in 2011 is when I was, uh, building Longtail Pro keyword research tool, right? Uh, and so launched that in mid 2011, something like that. Uh, and uh, grew Longtail Pro and have since exited that business about five years ago. Uh, and then just all along the way, I've I've tried out what I call lots of different niche pursuits, right? <laughs> Little business ideas. You know, I've done Amazon FBA, building little software tools. I've done lots of other things, um, all of it just kind of online uh, based businesses. Um, 
Yeah, and so that's sort of the business side. Uh, as you alluded to, uh, I've been, I'm married, I've got four kids, been married for, for many, many years. Um, and uh, I uh, enjoy hanging out with my family. I, I love working from home. And uh, sometimes I'm more passionate than others about running. Uh, I have run many, many marathons, about 13. I think at this point I, I lost count, uh, but uh, qualified for the Boston Marathon a couple of years ago, ran it in 2018. Uh, I'd like to get back there someday, but boy, it is just hard to, the older you get and the more everybody's in lockdown and marathons aren't happening, it's tough to stay motivated. So that that's sort of the side note on personal stuff is I, I run when I can, but Right now, I'm finding it difficult to stay motivated because, like, still marathons are not happening. So why should I be training? So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens in six months. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah. So you you alluded you've tried you know, a number of different business models kind of over the years. So FBA, mm-hmm. uh, obviously tools you've created, SaaS tools, um, affiliate sites. So kind of, you know, what 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 businesses have you got right now that you're kind of you've got on the go? So right now, uh, currently, uh, let's let's run through it. So I have um, okay. So let's start with the easy one. So nichepursuits.com. Let's get that out of the way, right? I've got that blog and and that business, and it it does really well. Um, but then I also have Link Whisper, which is a WordPress plugin. It's an internal link building tool, which we can get more into, but that is, you know, its own software business, software company that I started um, about a year and a half ago. And it's gained a lot of traction, thankfully. And um, I'm super excited about the future of Link Whisper in that business. Um, a lot of growth potential uh, there. Uh, so beyond that, then I've also got uh, ontheyard.com, which is a niche site that was a public case study that I did for niche pursuits. So, you know, niche site that I built from scratch over the last about two years. People can check that out. Really, I built it so that people could learn. You know, they could see a real site. I was sharing real earnings. Here's what I was doing. And they could hopefully apply some of those strategies uh, for themselves. Uh, besides on the yard, I do have three other uh, niche sites uh, that I own and operate that I haven't shared uh, publicly um, that uh, they do decent. I, uh, I should clarify that two of those are acquisitions that I made about uh, almost three years ago now, I guess, at this point. A couple of acquisitions that I made that I've grown those sites. Another one is just a niche site that I started like in 2012. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, I've just got that and, and working on that. Um, I probably have half a dozen other like little sites that probably still exist on the internet that make less than $10 a month type thing, right? But I don't really count those. They, I've, they've been long forgotten for many years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, let me just think. Oh, and uh, let's not forget about Motion Invest. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a partner there. Uh, I own a small piece. I'm not an operational partner, really. Um, it's really run by the other two partners. Um, but it's super exciting. It's a place where people can buy uh, smaller content sites is really uh, the core idea. People that are looking for a place to buy, uh, you know, niche sites that are making money with Amazon Associates or display ad revenue. That's kind of the core focus um, are these sites that are making less than usually a couple thousand bucks a month. Right. And so I've got Motion Invest. Um, got a couple other little investments again where I'm not operational there, but that I think covers covers most of it, um, I believe. So. <laughs> Cool. So yeah, lots of fingers and in, in lots of pies, but yeah, yeah. of course. I, I mean, yeah, it's cool to know that you've got, you know, you're still walking the walk with the uh, affiliate, uh, well, maybe affiliate sites, but content sites in general. Yep. Um, affiliate and yeah, content sites. Yep. So they're generally affiliate and ad uh, money. Generally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Cool. So I thought it'd be really cool to, you know, get, get, do a bit of a deep dive into internal linking and kind of, you know, you, you came up with Link Whisper, the, the tool, um, and, you know, solving a problem. Um, but, you know, I thought it'd be really good to kind of dive down a little bit deeper into, into you know, internal linking. What is it? Why is it important? And that kind of thing. So, um, you know, from your perspective, you know, at, at the highest level, kind of, you know, why is internal linking kind of something that you should consider and, and something that's important for, for any site? 
Yeah. So internal linking is really important um, for crawlability aspects, number one, right? So Google being able to crawl and index your entire site. Um, if you have pages that are out there that are orphaned, that don't have any links pointing to them, like Google's not gonna find them. Google crawls links, that's their spiders. You know, they, they crawl through links and that's how they find the entire website and they index it. So number one, and I know it sounds super simple, but uh, most websites out there have orphaned pages. They've got content they publish that they never built a link to, right? And so number one is just uh, indexability, crawlability, uh, it helps in, in Google. Uh, but then the other big aspect of it is that it helps Google know what your content is about and how to rank it. Um, so what I mean by that is that each article that you have really is its own individual entity. And that's how Google looks at it. It, it ranks pages, right? And so a link from an external website uh, to your page, that's great. And we all know that that helps with SEO. But because of the way Google views individual pages, a link from one of your own pages to another one of your pages still acts as a link in the exact same way that an external link works. And so you can rank your own website higher by pointing more internal links to the page you want to rank higher, right? So again, it's super simple stuff, right? But it's things that a lot of website owners don't think about. And so you can sort of pass SEO juice, if you will, to the pages that you want to rank better. And then, you know, sort of the final thing is the anchor text, of course, right? You can tell Google that your page is about bocce balls or garden hoses, right? Or whatever that key phrase is that you want to rank in Google, like you should be using that anchor text more in your internal links um, because that that's like an extra vote. And so that that's why internal linking is important generally. And then I'm happy to talk about why Link Whisper makes that easier and better, but but that's kind of why internal links are so important. Yeah, for sure. So you know, passing that link juice around, like yeah, increasing the relevance of those pages through the anchors and and that kind of thing. So I mean, when you're thinking about an internal linking strategy for a site, do you do you consider creating topical silos um, for your sites? So uh, a lot of people uh, do like to create, you know, sort of these silos where they, you know, maybe they've got a category or a topical silo that's all about, you know, um, gardening, right? And, and they will only link their articles that are about gardening to other articles about gardening, and they won't link to their other ones about backyard games, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm not real. I don't subscribe to that. So, so no, um, I take kind of a hybrid approach, like, First and foremost, if there is a, um, a, a phrase that is relevant to another article that I've written, I'll link to it, right? Within reason, right? Like I don't go nuts, right? But like if I happen to be talking about bocce balls um, in my category that's about gardening, like I'm not afraid to go outside that, that bubble, right? Mm -hmm. That silo. Um, but on the other hand, I do think it's important with certain sort of topical silos, right, is that a lot of times you build these um, pillar articles that then link out to, you know, five or ten supporting articles. And I think those supporting articles really need to be linking to and from. They all, they all need to be linking to each other. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to keep those clusters, you know, very relevant. But again, if, if I've got a relevant link outside that cluster... I'm game for that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that 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 totally makes sense. So yeah, I mean, you're still you're still kind of clustering content together. I guess you know the yep. the days are gone where you could like rank a have a have a site about dogs and then rank a page about tennis. <laughs> Just having one page, you know, you kind of need more like some supporting uh, articles as well. Right. So you kind of need some sort of cluster or or something kind of there to to do some internal linking with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay. So, yeah. So I was going to talk to you a little bit more about silos and stuff, but like, sounds like that's not like that's not a big uh, thing for you. And that's really interesting, actually, that you say that because I think it's very easy for people to get hung up on, like, you know, some people say it, everyone jumps on it, and then it becomes a thing. And like, you know, but I, I you know, it, yeah, I, yeah, it's interesting that you you're not so subscribed to that. Yeah. No. I mean, um, I look at like Wikipedia. 
Um, if you look at Wikipedia, I mean, they rank for everything, right? If you go look at one of their pages, they have like hundreds of internal links pointing to different articles and they're not subscribing to some sort of silo structure. And, and Google, in my opinion, like if, if you have like a relevant phrase or sentence, like it, it just makes absolute sense to link to that article, right? Yeah. So if it makes sense, and you are mentioning it anyways in your your article, like think like Wikipedia, like internal link liberally is sort of my my thing, right? And and it just helps Google find and know what's relevant. So, yeah, cool. I mean, well, with on that point, then is there kind of a a limit that you would suggest to you know that you for a number of links you put on a page, like in ex, external links from what page or. Yeah. Um, again, yeah. Even though you do want to link liberally, you don't want to go overboard with it. You don't uh -huh. want to end up with a thousand word article that has like a hundred <laughs> links, right? Um, that would be a little crazy. Um, I, I, boy, let me, let me just say that probably most of my content, like if I think about niche pursuits, for example, if I've got most of my content's a little bit longer, right? Like maybe 3000 words, mm -hmm. something like that for an article. I've, I've maybe got like 10 internal links is, is kind of like maybe average if I were to think about that, right? Like pointing to other articles. And so um, that, that kind of gives you an idea. Some articles might be more, might be, you know, 20 plus, but um, so that's kind of the general rule there is like, if you're doing maybe more than 10 links per thousand words like that's probably too many mm -hmm. cool that makes sense um do, do you do you ever consider or think about anchor text distribution and kind of trying to make that kind of natural in the in the eyes of google is that something that you consider much um well with internal linking you can you can be a lot more uh, aggressive with your anchor text um it's really the external links that you need to worry um google google can and will penalize for over optimization of anchor text with external links because that clearly looks like hey you're actually building these external links and you're not supposed to technically build links to your own site mm -hmm. it should happen naturally whereas google knows that you own your own website they're not going to penalize you like if you essentially have 100 percent anchor text pointing to your best bocce ball article right like you own the site, you can do whatever you want. Um, so I, I, um, I, I think sort of the rule that I hear and I don't subscribe to this like a hundred percent is like 80, 20, right? Like 80% exact match anchor text, 20% phrase or other, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't have a hard and fast rule other than, uh, you can be pretty aggressive with exact match anchor text when you're building internal links. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Okay. And, and what about, um, kind of the notion of kind of like link equity and kind of having that kind of passed around your site? I mean, is there ever, yeah. a, ever a reason why you might want to, you know, if you've got a lot of links say to a, an unimportant page on your site or several unimportant pages, is there any worth like removing, actually removing some of those internal links because you're kind of spreading that link equity to places that's not important to your site? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I did a lot of this. I, over the last year, I did a huge sort of SEO audit on nichepursuits.com, um, basically trying to recover from the May core update. And I did recover in December. So that's the short version. Um, but yes, a lot of what I did was doing this audit and looking at internal links. And I realized I had like so many links pointing to pages that like weren't getting any traffic and that I really didn't care about. And if that's the case, like remove that link because that I, I am a believer that that page sort of will retain more of that link equity. Mm -hmm. And then you can direct that link equity to the pages that are more important. Um, so I, I definitely subscribe to that. Um, and so that that's what I did is I, I did remove a lot of links just pointing to pages that were like maybe old income reports or old stories that... I wasn't really trying to rank in Google anyways for that stuff. So I just removed the internal links and made sure like the links I had were pointing to the articles I really 
wanted to rank in Google. And so I think that's important. I think people should go and do a big SEO audit on their site and remove a ton of links or add new links to like your most important pages. And, and of course, start at the top of the list. Like maybe you can run a report in Ahrefs or whatever tool you want to see which of your pages have the most like external links pointing to them or that have the, the highest page authority, right? And those are really where most of your SEO um, or link equity is mm-hmm. and, and, and clean those pages up and distribute the internal links where you want them to go most. Yeah. That's a good tip. Totally make that makes sense. So, what about um? Have you got uh? You, do you ever kind of consider about you know having this kind of making sure you don't have your important pages that are too many clicks away from like a seed page, which would be like a pillar article or a home page? Like, you know, the the idea being that the link equity or link juice kind of getting diluted the further away you get from kind of one of those seed pages. Is that something that you've seen, or is something you think that's, that's important to consider, or am I going to thinking too hard about it again. <laughs> well, uh, you could probably never think about things too hard. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's important to not have any of your pages more than three clicks away from your homepage. Uh, mm-hmm. I do try my best to, to structure my site so that any page can be found within three clicks. Uh, beyond that, um, I have never really tried to make sure they're within you know three clicks of a or whatever from a pillar article per se. Um, I guess I sort of figure if they're that close to the homepage, yeah. Google's going to find it and index it. And at that point, you know, it's at least close enough and sh- should should be indexed and rank okay. Yeah, cool. So is there any, anything else like link, link internal linking wise that, you know, I haven't covered that, you know, is important to think about when, when, you, when you're doing that on your site? Yeah, one thing that um, I don't hear talked about a lot, and maybe it's just because I have a really old blog and I caused a lot of my own problems. So maybe I'll share what I learned over this last year doing, a again, this SEO audit on niche pursuits is yeah. one thing that I often found. Um, let's take the example of keyword research, the phrase keyword research, right? Like I have a big article that I'm hoping to rank in Google for the phrase keyword research. Well, I... I also wrote lots of other articles, like probably two dozen, that also mention in the title, like keyword research. Yeah. Right. And so along the way, as I was building internal links, sometimes I would link to this, you know, the real keyword research article, my pillar article that I was hoping to rank for. But sometimes I would link to these other articles with the the anchor text of keyword research pointing to like three or four different articles, right? So lots of different times I use the anchor text of keyword research and I link to like five different articles. That's really confusing to Google, right? Uh, Because I'm telling them, I want to rank all five of these articles for the Mm -hmm. phrase keyword research, which is really not the case. I just wanted this one article. Um, You know, maybe uh, this other article, I actually wanted it to rank for keyword research tools, right? Yeah. So I should have been using the anchor text keyword research tools. So when I did this big SEO audit, I removed or changed a lot of the anchor text of my internal links. And thankfully, Link Whisper made this super easy because I can just go to the reports. I can click the expand option and it shows me every single link that's built to this page and what anchor text is used. So I don't have to go through all of my articles. I can just see, okay, here's the 20 links. And, oh, I'm using the phrase keyword research to this article. I shouldn't be using that anchor text at all I, because I want that to go to the other article, right? Mm-hmm. And so anyways, I, I did a lot of cleanup. And so I just would advise people to, to be aware as they're building anchor text and, and internal links, don't use the same anchor text to two different articles. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely have fallen foul with that on a number yeah. of my uh, sites. Yeah, it's it's kind of easy to do. Um, cool. Yeah. So what? Yeah. Yeah. Still, uh, I'm interested to talk a little bit more about the audit. If you if you've got is that is, sure? Did you do any more things in terms of the audit? Like, you know, are the traffic levels back to where they were with the from from May and what yep. what other stuff the, did you do? Because I'm sure there's, yeah, the, there's lots of people got hit <laughs> during this. So yeah. I'm sure they would love to hear more about that. Yeah, the traffic is back. Um, I have to pull up Google search, search console to see if it's officially, but like, 
it was like within like, I don't know, two or three percent of where it was. Um, yeah. And it's been going up. So I'm sure at this point it's officially passed. Um, but uh, I wish I knew exactly what it was that fixed the issue because I did like the whole gamut. Like, yeah. so first I started in uh, Google Search Console and I did more of a sort of technical audit. Um, I, there were some errors or slow pages, right? So I could I could find those things uh, that were kind of broken, right? You, you sort of got the red notifications in Google Search Console to fix those things. I fixed all those pages, right? Uh, and then I went, like I said, I did this big audit where I uh, cleaned up the site structure, but a big part of it was also I deleted a ton of content. Uh, I went through and just a lot of these really updates, personal updates sometimes, income reports. Um, sometimes I just had a thought for the day and wrote 200 words and I wasn't really trying to rank in Google at all. Uh, um, I, I, so what I would do is I would look at each page and I go, okay, is it ranking in Google? Is it getting any traffic and does it have any links? And if it was no to all of those, I just deleted it, right? Yeah. If it was yes to like one of those, like it's got links, but it's not getting any traffic, I would like redirect that page to a relevant article, right? Yeah. Um, and, or to the home page, just depending on what it was. So I went through and I deleted like 200 um, posts. Um, and so that was a huge part of it and a big undertaking because I did, I looked at every single one, kind of went through the thought process of, is it worth it? Do I want to keep it? Do I want to update it? Some of them like weren't getting much traffic, but I was like, there's a, there's a good core thought and article here. I, ju I just need to update this and maybe target a keyword a little bit better. Uh, so I did keep some that weren't getting any traffic. Um, and then uh, beyond link structure, um, what did I do? Um, just, oh, and then uh, sort of the next phase after that is I did a lot of content updates. I started doing a lot of content updates, just articles that were written almost 10 years ago, some of them. Uh, I updated them with, you know, sort of new whatever needed to be new. Uh, and so went through, used Market Muse to give me an idea of here's the key phrases you should use, here's how long the article should really be based on competitors and you know analysis in that regard. So updated a lot of articles, I don't know the number, but maybe 50 articles, right, that I actually went in and, and updated. And kind of all of those things, plus I did fix a lot of broken links uh, that were on there. Um, there's maybe a couple other little things. I'm just trying to think, but that generally, you know, that's that's what I did. And when the uh, December core update happened, like I immediately started seeing traffic finally go like the other direction. Yeah. So yeah, I think it can. I think it's certainly the case. It's probably it's not any one thing. It's just these accumulation of things that kind of build right. up and it kind of tips it over the edge, and you kind of yeah, you suddenly feel the impact of that during a core right. update. And it was crazy. Like, I still think to this day that Google just made an, uh, a mistake in May. Like, they were just wrong. They never should have penalized my site, right? Because, like, I've never done, like, link building, if you will, for niche pursuits. I've never been penalized in 10 years. And then, like, all of a sudden in May, it's like, hmm. So, I just think they fixed their mistake. But maybe, maybe I helped yeah. them fix that mistake by all the audit that I did and updates I did. Yeah, and you probably, you know, even if that's the case, you know, you've probably helped yourself with with making those changes anyway. So. For sure, yeah, it made the site better and stronger overall. Have you um, have you done? Have you actually tracked those specifically? Those kind of fifty articles, and seen, you know, if you've you know, increased the traffic for those fifty articles on in general. I have tracked specifically uh, those articles, and almost without fail, I've seen a traffic increase. Mm -hmm. uh, almost, usually within like the first two weeks, like Google will pick up those updates and I bump up two or three spots in Google, um, almost without fail. And so I've seen a huge uptick in traffic, um, from those articles that I've updated. And like, that's part of my process now, like maybe just forever. I don't know is that I'm going to have somebody helping me like just update articles forever. Like it's never going to end. I'm going to like go through the next 50 and then I'll probably start over and just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So, okay. So, um, so in terms of that, that process, you, you know, I guess you change a certain amount of the, the content, adding sort of paragraphs, deleting some stuff, I guess, potentially. Mm -hmm. And then you change the published date as well. 
So I keep the original publish date and then in my, uh, I change the modified date or the updated date. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, users, I don't know if we're getting too technical here, if I'll even describe it right, but basically on the front end, users see the updated date. They'll see it on the article and Google yeah. will also see the updated date, yeah. you know, that sometimes shows up in the SERPs. But the actual publish date in WordPress has not changed. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Cool. Yeah, because that's, yeah. that's what Google sees anyway. So yeah, see, yeah see they see both. They, they see both dates. They see the original publish date and then they see the modified date. And so, oh, right. I didn't realize that. Is the publish date yeah. in, in, the, in the code? They, yeah, yeah. And they don't display that unless that's the only date. They always mm -hmm. display the modified or updated date. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, with, yeah, there's definitely, I mean, a lot, I mean, a lot of people were affected in May, but even more, I think, well, it seems like more people were affected in December, but you know, in a negative way, but, um, some, something that, I mean, this de definitely doesn't apply to niche pursuits. And I think that's quite, it's an amalgamation of things and different things, but you know, obviously we've, we got a view of a, a lot of sites here at, uh, at niche website builders. So I mean, something that we saw from, from May specifically, it seemed to be that, um, almost without fail, the sites that were affected were ones that didn't have, um, uh, you know, branded anchor text as kind of their number one or naked URL, you know, as, as their kind of number one um, anchor. So they had mm -hmm. other anchors kind of in there. And, hmm. and quite often kind of spammy anchors, like the no text kind of anchor or a full stop kind of anchor. Um, right. And, and so it, it, it's absolutely not 100%, but like it seemed to be quite a strong correlation for that. I'm sure that's not the same for niche pursuits because I'm sure branded <laughs> branded is like number one by far, but um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's something that we that we definitely noticed kind of of all the ones that we saw that were affected. Um, yeah. So if that was for the May, have you noticed any sort of common themes for the um, December update? No, there's nothing. There's nothing. Not right now. There's nothing we kind of spotted. I'm waiting for. Yeah. I'm waiting for your uh, thing with the uh, Matt to come out, right? Because he's already yes. yeah, he's hinted at a few things, and um, but it's, it's early days. But he's still I know I know he's doing some work on that. So yeah, yeah, my podcast will come out on uh, Monday with him here just in a few days, and we did we spent maybe five to ten minutes kind of talking about uh, just thoughts, like and and we would try to be very clear, like we we don't know, and and Matt is doing some in depth studies with uh, Surfer SEO to like run a bunch of data across like thousands of sites. And so they're not quite done with that. So they don't have any final analysis, but he had some early thoughts that uh, if people want to listen to the podcast, they could do that. Yeah. 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 Definitely. At some point uh, in my life, I want to get to more of that point where we can kind of, kind of test for those things and do some more testing. We just don't have, yeah, I just don't have the, the time or the capacity of the, <laughs> to do that. I kind of need to listen to other people like Matt and his thinking, but um, yeah, cool. Okay. So, Talks about internal linking, and then you you know you've got the, the tool Link Whisper, and internal linking is a pain in the butt, right? <laughs> without without Link Whisper, it's time consuming, slow, boring. You know, you just you just don't want to do it, like frankly. Um, and and, and uh, the problem that I always kind of think about and have is that until you've got a bunch of site, until you've got a bunch of articles, there's nothing to internal link to. So it's kind of a big job that you do further down the line. You, you know, once you've got an established site, okay, maybe you can do some internal linking, but you yep. know, you've got to get like 50 articles in and then you've got to go back and do all the internet. And it's just a long job, right? So yeah, for the people who haven't used Link Whisper or know about it, to tell them a little bit kind of how that works. Yeah, so Link Whisper really came about out of my own need, right? for the very reason that you explained is like you publish an article and you kind of feel like you're done. Right. Uh, and then you realize you have 50 articles down the road or a hundred articles later, you're like, Oh man, I got to go like build a bunch of internal links so I can get uh, everything going where it needs to be structural setup. Um, and so I, I, again, I built it kind of out of my own need. And one thing that I really thought would be awesome is that if, and this is what Link Whisper does now, is as you're writing a draft of your article, just below that draft, uh, it pulls in link suggestions. It says, you know, you should link to this article, right? It gives you a bunch of options sometimes. Depending on how much content you have on your site, it might be five or 10 link suggestions or more. Uh, and all you have to do is kind of check the box. You just click the button, it's already got anchor text selected and the URL that it's gonna to point to and you just hit update and it adds it uh, for you. 
So that's the really cool thing. Uh, but perhaps what I like even more is then once you've got existing content, let's say you have an article that you wished ranked higher in Google, you can then go to your Link Whisper reports, click on that article and add internal links to that one specific article. And Link Whisper will suggest here's the five or 10 links that you should be pointing to this article because you have a bunch of articles talking about bocce balls and you're trying to rank this article for bocce balls, you should probably link to that article, right? That's a simple example, but um, uh, that's kind of what Link Whisper does is that it, it helps you quickly find link suggestions that are relevant to your content to build those links and uh, kind of pass around that link equity as needed across your site. Awesome. Um, I mean, that's the, I mean, that's kind of like that's like the, the core thing, right? But there's kind of a lot of other little things that you, you can do within the tool, right? There's, yeah. There's, there's additional. So yeah, tell us about some of the kind of other value yeah. stuff you've got in there. Yeah. So they're they're definitely within the Link Whisper reports. Um, that becomes very powerful. You can see all of your articles and how many links they have pointing to them or coming out from them, right? At a quick glance. So you can see which ones like don't have any internal links pointing to them. You probably want to build some internal links to those. Um, there's also uh, like a, a, a broken link report as well. You can see all the sites that you're linking to that no longer exist or whatever. Uh, and you can quickly edit or remove those right within the, the link whisper interface without having to go into each article. So it saves a lot of time in that regard. Uh, and then another one that, that people do use a lot is the automatic uh, link building. And so let's say again, uh, you want, you know, you've mentioned bocce ball a lot on your, your site. You can just create an automatic internal link uh, to that. Basically, you just say, okay, every time bocce ball is mentioned, I want to link to my bocce ball article, right? And so a lot of people use that because they have got a lot of their phrases. They know that they want to link to. You can just put that in the auto linker and it'll go and it'll build all those links for you. Um, there's, there's a couple other little things there. Uh, one thing that we do to make the internal link suggestions even better, if people want, they can connect up with Google Search Console. And this is sort of a new feature in the last couple of months where uh, you link your site up to Google Search Console. And then because Google already knows everything that you are ranking for and what key phrases you're ranking well in, in Google for, uh, Link Whisper kind of gets that data and can say, okay, you're ranking already for best bocce balls. Like that's gonna be a really good, you know, a, a link suggestion, right? And so it improves the anchor text and internal link suggestions because of all that data that's coming from Google Search Console. Cool. Yeah, I, I haven't used the also linking feature yet because I'm just scared of it. <laughs> but I, you know, yeah. there's a risk of over-optimization there. But like I say, you can be quite aggressive with, with internal links, right? Yep, and and there are a couple of settings there. On uh, you know, it, like you can have it just um, link only once per page, for example, right? So maybe you must mention best bocce ball ten times in one article, but it'll just take one of those mentions and link, right? So that there are some controls that you can have there. But I I generally agree with you. I don't use that very much. That was a feature that customers really wanted. They wanted that auto linking. Uh, and so I'm like, okay, you know, use it with caution, yeah. you know, as long as you're aware and know what you're doing, like, that's fine. And, and in certain cases, it, do, it does make a lot of sense, right? Um, but you, you have to be careful. You don't want to end up with a thousand links pointing to a page that maybe you didn't want a thousand links pointing to. Yeah, yeah. So how does that work? Is it like in real time? So if, if I do, if I do a, a write a new, a new post now and it's got what you've all written in it, then it'll, it'll go back, it'll, it'll let that as, as I publish yeah. that, that article as well. Yeah, yeah, it'll essentially kind of run a, a cron job every so often and we'll okay. recognize, oh, there's a new mention. So it might not be immediate on budget published, but it'll be soon. Cool. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. So are you able to reveal anything that's coming uh, down the road for, for Link, Link Whisper? Um, you know, we're, we're primarily just focused on just trying to make the internal link suggestions better and better. Uh, as we go and just, uh, you know, working on making it easier to use. Uh, you know, we've got most of the major functions 
uh, to be honest, that I wanted to get out the door. Um, there's a couple other little ideas that, that we're playing with. And like we launched on Shopify not too long ago. Um, so it integrates and people have a Shopify store. We integrated with Google Search Console. Um, but for now, we're just really just trying to make the suggestions even better, cleaning up the user interface and just growing it as is. I mean, we really want, I want to establish it as the go-to place for internal links. And so I don't know if we'll ever like expand beyond internal linking, um, probably not. And, and that's just fine. If we can become like the niche tool for internal links, like we'll, we'll have sort of owned that space in the SEO world. And that's, that's awesome. Yeah. That sounds, that's cool. Uh, I mean, I just thought of another feature that I use quite a lot that, that you, you didn't mention. You, you can search for keywords, right? So you could search yes um, for specific keywords that you want to find in, in posts across your site so that you can kind of point them to a specific article. So that was a feature you added reasonably early on, I think, but that, that was kind of something that I was yep. looking for when you put that yep. out. So, yeah, that's yep, cool. absolutely. Yeah, rather than hopping over to Google and doing a search and then, right, because that's maybe how a lot of people, you know, if they're trying to rank for the phrase, you know, gardening hose. I'll go, oh, have I ever mentioned gardening hose on my website? Let me go to Google and then, you know, go into all those articles and, you know, build an internal link. Link Whisper just makes it a lot easier. You just type in garden hose and it shows you here's everywhere you mentioned. You can just click a button to add the actual link. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, is there any, ever any goal? Because I guess, you know, with, with internal linking, us as SEOs kind of understand, like, it's, it's important. But, you know, your average kind of blogger, your mom, your mom blogger or whatever, you know, uh, is there ever, a, is, is, is it you just want to stay in that world and maybe kind of bring agencies into it as well and kind of get them using it? Or, or you know, do you have any kind of desire and goal to kind of try and make it more, uh, what's the word, I guess, uh, um, you know, just increase knowledge and understanding among people who don't really understand SEO, but like for them, like they wouldn't even be looking for a tool, right? For like this. Right. We wouldn't understand like the... Uh, how it could benefit them. So is that something you thought about or are you happy staying in the SEO world? Uh, no, I, I've certainly thought about that. And we have, you know, sort of gotten a toehold a little bit in like certainly agency world. We have a lot of agencies that use Link Whisper for their clients. Like we have a 50 site license that people mm -hmm. can get if they, they, they want to get that. Um, so do have a lot of agencies and I'm, I'm always surprised at just like, I think I'm just kind of talking to content marketers or, you know, niche website builders or affiliate marketers. And then I look at the people that buy and somehow the word's getting out. I don't, you know, I don't know where it's coming from some of the times, but I've got lots of attorneys, lots of real estate agents. <laughs> um, I had a yacht rental website, right? Like, so there's a lot of small mom and pop stores that are just buying Link Whisper and using it. They're probably the more savvy ones that are reading niche pursuits or, are you know following what you guys are doing on niche website builders right but so if you have any good ideas how to tap into that larger like small business world i'm all ears yeah i think it's, it's i guess the i mean the people that would be good i mean just just throwing it out there but like you know those those guys those, those people that are content publishers that have got uh ads on their site so you know people like azoic and mediavine and ad thrive if you could you know, they're, they've also they've got a blog that's successful because they've, they've yeah. had to get to a certain point to get ads on their site with those people. Yep. So they're, they're probably interested in growing the blog. It's, it's a, actually a genuinely a piece, an income from this and maybe kind of somehow connecting with their audience a little bit more and having a bit more of a close partnership. That's just a, something that just came to yeah. me off the top of my head. But, you know, you, you're probably yeah. not going to get the people that have got 100, 200 traffic uh, sessions a month. But those ones that are more right. established, they're doing well. Maybe, yep. maybe they're the guys that... that yeah, you know, it's crazy. There's, um, I'm always fascinated with how big, like, the mom blog world is. Um, like, sometimes we just get stuck in our affiliate marketing mm -hmm. space. And I've connected with a few of kind of the mom bloggers. Long story short, short is I did buy a mom blog. That's one of the acquisitions that I made. Somebody, uh, a mom that ran it for 10 years, then I bought it. And so I, I, I've uh, dabbled in that world a little bit and it's, it's humongous. It's massive. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to, it's probably bigger than the affiliate marketing space um, is, is the number of mom bloggers out there. Right. right. And, and, and I've only tapped into it like a little bit. Right. 
Um, and so I think there's just, you're, you're probably right. I need to find all the mom blog influencers out there. Uh, and that's a huge market for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, is there anything else you want to cover about Ling Whisper before we kind of move on? Uh, no, I think we pretty much wrapped it up. Um, like it's just, I'm, I'm super excited about the trajectory that it's on business wise. Like it's, it's grown really well in the last year and a half. And we're always open to feedback for people that maybe have suggestions or ideas. Uh, we're just, yeah, I'm excited about the business and where it's going. Um, and hopefully it's just making people's lives a lot easier. Mm -hmm. For sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it certainly does. I can, I can testify to that. So, uh, from personal experience, but okay. So in terms of, um, like, you know, con content sites and, uh, and, and the future of content sites, do you have any view on kind of like where, where we've been and where we're going with that? And do you see there's going to be an increased demand in, in for, for content sites, but from an acquisition point of view going forward, uh, and that kind of thing? Yeah, I think all the evidence definitely points towards that there is more interest uh, in content sites. I think part of that is this past year due to COVID, lots more people are looking for ways that they can make money online, something they can do from home. So I think there's been a lot more interest in affiliate marketing and content sites because that's sort of the entry level way, right? Is like, hey, you can build a little site, write a couple articles and you can potentially be making some money. Um, but we also, the other evidence to the points to that is like the multiples on marketplaces are increasing, right? Like even just less than 10 years ago, um, I think about empire flippers, everything they listed and sold was for 20 times monthly earnings. Like now that, I mean, it's almost double that, right? Like we're, we're getting close to 40 is like not unheard of at this point. And so there's certainly a lot more interest from people that are buying and it appears that there's a lot more people coming into the market. So it's, it's, um, it's an interesting space to be in. Like it, it's growing quickly. Uh, there's always lots of changes thanks to Google. So that keeps things exciting. Uh, but, um, that, that's kind of where I see it. I see that, uh, it's going to keep growing and where it's going to go after the next five years. I don't know. That's anybody's guess. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see where you are in the, in the next 10 years. And, right. <laughs> and see how many, how many more pandemics we've had to live through. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> none. Hopefully none, yeah. That would be nice. Um, cool. So what's, what's planned for, for Spencer Hawes in the, in the – well, I mean, I guess you're growing, spending a lot of time with uh, Link Whisper in the short term, but have you got any goals, like mid-long term, or are you just taking it, taking it as it comes? Um, I guess I do have goals. I've, I'm a very goal oriented person. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to actually get rid of projects. That's, that's one of my goals this year is to have my hands in less pies. Uh, and actually one that we did, uh, I guess I'll mention it. What the heck? Uh, one business that I didn't mention is I own tablelabs.com. Mm -hmm. Um, a little software tool. I'm in the process of selling that. So by the time this goes live uh, or shortly thereafter, it probably will have been sold. Uh, and I'm hoping to do that like with some of the other niche sites that I own. I want to sell those off. I really, um, I, I would love to only have one focus in my business. Uh, and so I'd like to narrow that down Honestly, what I'm trying to do is I'd like to grow on the yard as much as possible. My other portfolio, possibly sell those in the next one to two years, be able to just focus on niche pursuits and link whisper for a year or two, and then see at that point, I always think, ah, maybe I'll just sell it all and then just start from scratch and see what happens. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so part of me is like, ah, in three years, I'm going to have sold out of everything, like even niche pursuits, like just sell it and like retire for a while. Then the other part of me is like, I know I'm too ambitious and too entrepreneurial. And like, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's, that sounds exciting. Yeah. I can't wait to see what, yeah. what happens in the next few years. Yeah. So stay tuned. Be, I don't even awesome. know what's going to happen. <laughs> awesome. So, um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, in terms of Link Whisper, I think you've got some sort of offer that for, for niche website builder listeners. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. And let's, 
give uh, niche website builder listeners a $20 off coupon. Um, that's not a deal that I ever offer publicly unless it's like Black Friday uh, or maybe one other time a year. Right. And so, so it is, it's a good deal. It's, it's not a coupon that is out there anywhere on the internet. So $20 off. Um, I, I don't know if you have a special link that you want to send them through uh, right now, but um, definitely we'll make sure that's in the show notes or wherever you want that, the link they can go to, to get that. Um, I guess uh, here's an easy way to do it. Let's have a coupon code. Should we just have it niche website builders? Go for Be it, the yeah. coupon code. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you're listening to this, go to linkwhisper.com, go to the checkout, use niche website builders as your coupon code. We'll have that be $20 off. We'll make sure Mark gets credit for that if you do that. So awesome. That, that's the deal. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks very much. Um, I think we've discussed all the places that people can find you. Like we're already there, right? So yeah. <laughs> and, that's um, where I'm at. But cool. Yeah. So, um, uh, well, once again, like, Thanks so much for your time, Spencer. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. And um, yeah, good luck. Good luck in the next few years. And uh, yeah, speak again soon. Yeah, absolutely. It's been great coming on the podcast. I'll just say that I do have a podcast. I think we mentioned that. People can you know tune into that if they want to hear my voice more. Otherwise, yeah, go to Niche Pursuits um, and you can follow along with my updates there. But uh, super great catching up, Mark. Really appreciate it. Great. Thanks, Spencer. Thank you. Thanks again for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're listening to the podcast version of this episode, please subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Please rate and review as this will allow us to grow our audience and create more shows like this one. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to be the first to know about any new episodes that we release. Until the next episode, goodbye.